Good morning, we are here in IACI 2016 Congress. My name is Silvia Sanchez Garcia, um, while well, I'm a junior member in asthma section. And we have a collaboration with uh, Pediatric Allergy and Immunology, so we are performing interviews, and today we have the chance of interviewing Omer Kalaisi, who is the senior author of the last article in, uh, entitled Genetic Associations of the Response to Inhaled Corticosteroids in Children during an asthma exacerbation. Welcome, Omar. Thank you, Silvia. It's a pleasure for me to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank to you. So, just for beginning, uh, what, what, what is the main purpose of your study? Yeah. Well, the main, one of the main aims of asthma treatment is to prevent exacerbations, but it's not always possible. Some children end up having exacerbations despite optimum treatment. For instance, if you look at the results of the SARP study, Severe Asthma Research Program in children, even children with mild asthma have had um, a 72% rate of exacerbation, which is extremely high. So no matter what you do, we end up treating exacerbations in children. And currently, the guidelines recommend the use of uh, systemic corticosteroids for treating exacerbations. Of course, in children with severe asthma or in some children um, who have frequent exacerbations, then the frequent use of systemic corticosteroids may be associated with adverse events. And even though there are some studies that have looked at the effect of inhaled corticosteroids in the treatment of asthma exacerbations, as I said, it's not currently recommended in children. So we hypothesize that there may be a group of children out there who respond to inhaled corticosteroids better than other children. And we wanted to determine if there are any genetic associations uh, for a better response to uh, inhaled steroid treatment during an exacerbation. So the purpose was to define a group, subgroup of children with a certain genetic structure that will respond to inhaled corticosteroids better than others do. Yeah, well, really important. Can you summarize your, your methods, the methods you yeah, used? Sure. What we have done is we have recruited 82 children who were being followed with the diagnosis of asthma mm -hmm. uh, at Gaziantep University, which is a city located in the um, southeastern part of Turkey. These children were diagnosed with asthma by demonstration of reversible airway obstruction by a pediatric allergist. So, mm -hmm. And then when these children started to have symptoms of exacerbations, they came back to the clinic. They were evaluated, their um, oxygen was measured, their FEV1, most importantly, was measured, and then the children were treated with 4,000 micrograms of fluticasone, single dose, with, together with three doses of uh, salbutamol. And then a decision was made whether to admit or discharge these children. All children responded uh, more or less, and nobody was admitted. And then these children were instructed to continue fluticasone for another week, mm -hmm. and then they came back. Our primary outcome measure was the FEV1 response at four hours. And then, mm, we, after the completion of this study, these children were genotyped in a total of uh, eight SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, and five molecules. And then the FEV1 response at four hours were evaluated according to the genotype of the patients. The, the molecules, um, we determined the molecules by looking at the medical literature and found, we found that there were a couple of molecules who were associated with a better response to corticosteroids. So we took the SNPs and these molecules, so they were a priori described molecules. And eight SNPs and five molecules, and then we analyzed results according to the genotype in these molecules. And so the finally we found that one SNP in one molecule, which is 
NR3C1 is associated with a better response to inhaled corticosteroids. There were um, two alleles, G and C, the children who were homozygous for the G allele, I mean those who had GG on both chromosomes, had a much better response to inhaled foticasone compared to those who possessed C allele either in homozygous or heterozygous state. Oh, and then we concluded that uh, the genotype, the G allele in the NR, NR3C1 molecule is associated with a favorable, resp favorable response to inhaled corticosteroid. Okay. So why did you choose uh, some, why did, have you chosen some genes uh, instead of others? What, what are the, 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 criteria, the criteria that you selected? Well, these are the genes who were shown to be associated with a, a good response to inhaled corticosteroids okay. in chronic asthma treatment. Okay. But there is no data whatsoever that uh, shows whether these um, SNPs are associated in, with um, a better response in the acute setting. Okay. So that was the purpose of the study and the idea is if we could determine which, I mean NR3C1 seems to be a candidate molecule, if these patients, if this, our data is confirmed in larger studies, then it would make sense to treat these children with inhaled steroids rather than systemic steroids for acute exacerbations. Okay, so do you recommend to use high dose of inhaled well, corticosteroids? It, as I said, it depends on the children. Currently, um, systemic cortic yeah. corticosteroids are um, <coughs> recommended. But we, I believe that there are some children who are good candidates. And NR3C1 may be a, a, a good molecule for this because it's physiologically, it makes sense for two reasons. Number one, its function is that it's a glucocorticoid receptor located in the cytoplasm. When the glucocorticoid goes into the cell, then this, um, together with the receptor, they are transferred to the nucleus. Mm -hmm. So it can function as a transcription factor itself because it binds to glucocorticoid response elements. And in addition, it can modify the transcription, other transcription factors. And this SNP, this particular SNP, is located in intern 2, and this was shown to be to increase the affinity of the receptor to glucocorticoids. So there is a physiological basis for this observation. But um, I think this finding needs to be confirmed in larger studies. And if that happens, I think that's going to take the treatment of acute asthma exacerbation in children to another dimension. Okay, thank you very much. So just to summarize, one sentence or two sentences as take-home message for take the audience? Take-home message is um, some genetic variations can be associated with a better response to inhaled corticosteroids in children with asthma exacerbation, but um, this remains, NR3C1 is a candidate. This needs to be confirmed in larger studies. Okay. Thank you very much and congratulations for your job. Thank you very much to you as well.